what's up everybody, hey MP here. And today we're gonna to take a look at authentication uh, with a distributed system and how web components uh, quite possibly might be the answer to easily authenticating uh, all these little applications that you're making. So microservices, I am a huge fan of them, but one of, those one of the challenges with going uh, full microservices is authentication. How do I know who's logged in to which system? Does every system have to know, have to implement their own login, um, what have you? That's something that you just get out of the box with the big monoliths and something that we need to tackle uh, moving forward with the microservices approach. So what if I have this very tiny application um, maybe it's a single page application or just a one pager and I want to get that deployed quickly but I do need it to be uh, parts of it to be behind authentication or at least parts of the information coming out need to be behind some sort of authentication wall. In the microservices world I think JWT is a great option for solving this problem. So I'll just let you know what I've been doing and hopefully that helps. So the way that JWT works is with uh, two tokens. So you need two tokens to authenticate to any one uh, or more systems. The first token is a refresh token. This refresh token is going to get you access to the second token, which is the access token. You definitely don't want anyone to have your refresh token because the way that I've seen JWT uh, implemented uh, most often is uh, a refresh token lasts for a long time, so you need to keep it secure because if somebody grabs your refresh token, they can grab your access tokens at will and they can um, pretend to be you. So the access token. The access token is generally short-lived and because it's short-lived, we can potentially store it in local storage. What does that mean? So if we store the ref refresh token in something pretty secure like a, uh, a, a cookie that um, is HTTP only, we can reliably say that the front end applications are going to have a difficult time accessing it. Not to say that they can't, but just a more difficult time accessing it. Whereas the access token, what we could do is say that since this is so short lived, um, we can uh, give the front-end applications access to uh, what's in this access token, access to the token itself. See, the important distinction with cookies and the differences between cookies and uh, local storage is that uh, your front-end apps can access what's in local storage, whereas cookies, they can't access it. Whatever's on the front-end has no access to your cookies. The cookie is just being sent along with every, every request. Now, this is important and relevant to web components for a specific reason. Since the access token is being stored in local storage, that means that our web component that's on the front end can interact with it. So if we can train web components, if we can teach them, teach them this, uh, this system, then we can train the web components to uh, see if the user is authenticated, if not, uh, send them to the place that they need to be, that they can authenticate themselves, and uh, store these new tokens that you're getting and make sure that these uh, tokens are being sent with uh, any future requests. So what that means is that we could potentially create a web component so powerful that it can go on static web pages and instantly have authentication. So it sounds too good to be true. Let's see if we can actually accomplish that, shall we? Okay, so I have the world's most basic uh, application. I have this single page uh, application. It's just a, an index.html file with a router on it. One of the routes is this home page, and this home page has a user list on it. So if we look into the user list, let me bump up the text a little bit, is it's trying to pull users from this system that we have out, so uh, a separate microservice that we have in our infrastructure. And uh, let's see if it's actually successful in returning with that user data. I bet you can guess if it is or not. So if we take a look at network, 
we can see that immediately that user list is trying to make a GraphQL call, it's getting blocked, and the message is saying that we don't have a valid JWT, so we can't access this information. Now, what if we made a, a, a web component for our entire infrastructure uh, to hand out to these to applications like this that say, um, if you need to authenticate with our central authentication service, just use this web component. Let's see what that web component would look like. So what this web component would do is that in the callback, so this is as it's being attached to the DOM, it's going to attempt to grab an access token from our central authentication server. So it knows where to go to get the auth token, so here would be the address. It knows it needs to go to slash access token to get it. It's going to include the credentials. What that's going to do is it's going to include our refresh token that's in the cookie. So the cookie is going to be sent along with this request. If it comes back successful, what it's going to do is store that access token in local storage so that the rest of our application can use it. That's extremely important. Anything stored in local storage, JavaScript can access. So we want our entire application to access this new access token. And once it does that, it's going to dispatch an event. So looking at that, what that means is that once I place this uh, hacks-auth web component onto our web page, we should be immediately logged in, and we should be able to start making requests to this uh, other microservices to get the user information. So I'm going to uncomment that. So let's refresh and we should see a listing of our new users. So there you go. Looks like we got the new users. If we look in application, local storage, you could see that new access token. Uh, if I wanted to uh, see what was in the token, if my front end application wanted to see what was in the token, um, it could easily decode it and get my username out of it. That's one of the powerful things about JWT is that you can store a lot of really valuable information into the access token so that your front end application can um, display that information to your user. So I hope you liked the video. Um, I hope that could illustrate what the potential of a um, authentication web component could look like in a decoupled microservice architecture. Uh, thanks for watching.